Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. So welcome to this uh, video where the purpose of the talk today, uh, the discussion today, as you can see, we have a new member with us. So the discussion today is about the cost of living in Netherlands, which includes every type of cost that you spend while living in Netherlands. So I have with me here uh, Pai Lenin. He's famously called Pai Lenin because he has a YouTube channel which is growing really fast and if you want to support him then please uh, subscribe to his channel I will leave all the links in the description below support support is not important uh, what is important is you learn Python or yeah. you learn about data engineering and data analysis so yeah if you want to learn about Python data analysis data engineering or other kind of stuff make sure to subscribe to my channel uh, you can find the link in the description section below, below. Yeah. Uh, so he did his uh, masters from tu delft and now he is working as a data engineer in workspot uh, so i think i'll leave the rest of the introduction to him but before that uh, the name of his channel is pi lenin and he has already 2.5k subscribers in the date in which we are recording today yeah it's not a big number i'm not beyonce <laughs> you you can see but uh, yeah uh, as sambit told i'm uh, lenin mishra i'm from orissa in india i came to the netherlands in 2014 for my masters and in 2016 i started working as a python developer and then eventually as an etl developer now I work as a data engineer in a company called uh, Workspot in uh, Amsterdam and I've been living here for the last four years now and uh, yeah Netherlands is pretty expensive <laughs> if, that's, uh, if that's the short uh, takeaway from uh, this video <laughs> maybe yeah. so you'll soon know what we are so it will be like a QA and a discussion between both of us so we share our experiences about how much you spend while living in Netherlands so we'll try to keep it very short but uh, it depends on how we proceed and uh, we'll also leave all the information below in the description so don't forget to check the description for more info so let's jump into the first question uh, so first everyone is concerned about studying here so how much is the education expenses in Netherlands in general on average what's your experience like should I be talking in terms of Indian money or in euros uh, maybe I think it will be better for euros because there okay. are also international okay. people so it's better okay because the uh, Indian euro to Indian money keeps fluctuating all mm. the time yeah that's also true so yeah. people can you yeah. can convert yourself yeah uh, so again remember it's uh, in euros so mm. you have to check for yourself so when i came here for my masters i remember i took a education loan of 40000 euros approx 40000 euros and basically that was supposed to uh, you know take care of my education expense my living uh, living expense fooding expense miscellaneous expense and everything uh, so uh, my tuition fees for uh, two years mm -hmm. was around uh, 27,000 euros, which is 13,500 euros per annum. Mm -hmm. uh, my At that time, I used to rent a very small house, a uh, small room actually in a flat. And uh, that's because I already had such a huge loan. And uh, yeah, I just felt uh, guilty of spending money outside. In fact, for the first two years, my master's, I never ate outside. Mm -hmm. The first time I ate outside was actually with uh, a senior. Uh, if you might be knowing Manish Tripathi, yeah, he yeah. took me out when he uh, graduated from TU ah, Delft. Okay. And then the next time I had was with you uh, in that workplace. Okay. So I, I lived like a miser. So my yeah, fooding yeah. expense was under 100 euros. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I mean that's true because for non-Europeans especially who pay a lot of tuition fees, uh, very high tuition fees. So I always have said in previous videos also check in the information card in the top right corner that uh, you should know how to cook. Then you can save money yeah. that you don't eat outside and you can eat like we yeah. did for the for yeah, two years actually, masters. Yeah. And actually these days with the YouTube videos and everything it's not difficult to cook at all. All you yeah. need is a frying pan. And a smile on your face that's it like uh, you are done with really good food right yeah, yeah that's a nice point so yeah. 
the thing is that uh, yeah for for two years masters that was the cost and now i think it's around 15000 or 16000 euro per annum that you spend for masters and uh, and all these costs are for non europeans because they are the ones who pay a lot and for europeans who are similar uh, they pay the similar fees as uh, the people who pay in dutch people pay so it's somewhere around 2000 or 3000 euros yeah. Per year. per year so that's not that much high as compared to what we pay but uh, and i know from my experience because one of my cousins they did their mba one or two years back in erasmus rotterdam so they paid around uh, 40000 or 50000 euros only for the i think it included the tuition and the living and it was around 40 to 50000 euro and the mba is like a one year program so for one year you spend that much of money which is equivalent to two years masters so these things vary and this is what i know from my experience i hope it helps uh, so let's move to the next question so the next question is in general like how much you pay for the rent like private or maybe shared or what's your experience very briefly um so uh, while i was a student uh, my average renting price was 450 because for students it's, it's usually less the uh, the rental agencies the price uh, apartments uh, uh, in a way that it is affordable for students but when you uh, are uh, working as I am right now or you are uh, the prices go really high mm -hmm. so for example in uh, in Delft when I was a student mm -hmm. I my average price for sharing a flat or even I actually took a studio in my in the last six months of my masters uh, I used to pay 450 euros average mm -hmm. you know but when I um, moved to my job in Rotterdam, I started paying 600 euros for a very small room, again in a shared apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, and now I'm living in Amsterdam and this is just uh, totally crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, this room where we are sitting right now, this costs 750 euros. It's again a shared uh, apartment. But in Amsterdam. But in Amsterdam, yeah. And uh, this is just uh, ridiculous. And but that's what it is, you know, like you can't, uh, you can't really do anything. Unless if you want, you can stay two hours away from your workplace just in order to save 200 euros on your rent. Mm. But then that's not, I mean, uh, time is also and money, you know. How much did you spend during your uh, student time? Like uh, So around... Uh, 450 euros per month okay okay so I and that was shared right or that like was that? shared yes yes uh, but i took a studio also mm -hmm. and the studio like i said last six months uh it was again 450 euros it was exact 450 euros mm -hmm. so i have uh, gone between 412 which was my initial room to 475 and so average and shared, okay. uh yeah okay shared, yes Okay. Yeah. Uh, so based on my experience is the same so for shared it varies between somewhere between 400 to 500 euros and the private is also sometimes more expensive sometimes similar it depends on the size of the room that you are living so as per my experience apart from the size of the room if you are living little bit away from the city center may it be in any city you always pay 50 to 100 euros less depending on the comparative pricing that you have in different cities and uh, in delft especially i like my private housing was like three kilometers away from the center in van Hesselen. i don't know if you know about that street maybe it will be helpful and i paid like 480 euros or 490 euros something like that uh, in 2015 to 17 but you also get if you stay in a private housing you also get some percentage it is calculated based on a formula which i will leave in the top right corner in the information card because i made a video on it how you get the house rent allowance and how much you are eligible to get so you can refer that to understand the house rent allowance mechanism in netherlands so after allowance i paid like 380 or 390 euros per month because i was staying little bit away from the center and these prices also increase every year like 10 euros or 20 euros some percentage according to the regulation so if you are coming after one or two years they will obviously increase so think of something roughly around 500 or 450 or something like that yeah yeah so yeah. let's move to the next question yeah. uh, what is the i mean you have already mentioned it but we can just mention it in brief like how much you spend when you eat outside on average like a good meal or a fast meal like a walk or something very fast food and how much you spend if you 
cook regularly and buy the grocery and cook yourself on an average or a range how much is expected i remember costs. that uh, when i was a student i used to eat uh, properly by the way mm -hmm. just because i spent less money doesn't mean i mm -hmm. used to starve myself no i used to cook everything and uh, actually within 100 euros maybe sometimes 110 120 euros uh, all Every my month. fooding exp expenditure was taken care of mm -hmm. now my budget of eating budget has gone up to 300 euros mm -hmm. i'll be honest with you because a uh, lot of times during the week when you're working sometimes your colleagues or your friends ask you let's go out to the bar or let's go out and eat something mm -hmm. or let's go to this fancy place so usually uh, uh, I think grocery wise I still buy around 100 euros worth of grocery a month mm -hmm. which usually includes dinner food because I always have my lunch outside mm -hmm. uh, at least in this yeah, job okay. it, it's not possible for me to cook and take it to office every day and uh, so it's usually dinner stuff that still costs me around 100 euros of course uh, I'm, I've started to spend more freely so uh, it's like 100 euros per month for eating for, outside the total eating. no no not eating outside for dinner like, ah, okay, okay, uh, okay. like the grocery stuff if i calculate uh -huh. i think one third of the money i spend on fooding is spent on groceries so for this month so i tend to buy a little something you know uh, extravagant or uh, sometimes just cravings normal cravings which i didn't used to do when i was in delft mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of times when you go out so basically if it is a uh, uh you know like a good restaurant good rest uh, maybe like a buffet yeah like uh, for example uh, if you are eating at a turkish place or mm -hmm. if you are eating at a falafel place usually the food comes to around 8 10 euros mm -hmm. including work places chinese work and uh, you know noodle places mm -hmm. but if you go a little further like um, uh, uh, restaurants specializing in meat or a restaurant specializing in thai food or like sushi for example mm -hmm. you usually uh, end up spending around 25 to 30 euros 30 per euros, meal yeah. you know Same. so for me right now i was doing a rough calculation i think i, I spend around 300 to 350 mm -hmm. per month on food mm -hmm. now now that I'm working, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's the same. Like uh, when you so just to summarize, like if you are when you are working, as you get a salary and you can maintain that standard of living. So people have like uh, depends on how you spend, how much you eat outside. It will be somewhere roughly around uh, based on our spendings, like two fifty to three hundred euros or something like that, including everything like cooking yourself or eating outside. And uh, for eating. As a student, when you are a student, 100 to 150 euro is sufficient for uh, between 100 to 150 euro or maybe it is even less depending on how you cook, what you eat, what are the ingredients and if you cook regularly or not. Uh, not necessary, yeah, by the way. I know a Chinese guy, mm -hmm. he was my friend uh, when I was a student. He used to spend around 1500 euros per month. His room was just 450, uh, 430 or something okay. and he used to eat outside all the time. Ah, okay. he, he used to go to that workplace that we used to go and he used to eat there both lunch and dinner and he used to spend around 1500 so it all depends on you yeah, yeah. but based on because I based mean it on also how, depends what type of family you come yeah, from like, like yes, whether you have financial exactly. hardship like don't starve yourself yeah, you know yeah. like uh, just because it's expensive don't starve yourself but, but, but I think if you know a little bit of cooking you can easily manage you can and, easily get away with like half the cost like yeah. uh, even not even 100 euros it can but, be even less yeah but like actually it can be less or i think 150 euros a month is also fine yeah, for a student you'll have a I decent think, uh, yeah. very satisfied like uh, think of it like five euros a day you are spending breakfast lunch something to eat uh, and maybe evening. sometimes during lunch you can have a soup or something like a bread in yeah. the canteen of your university yeah, and yeah. still you can survive in yeah the yeah but the thing is i i never really got into the habit of eating dutch soup Oh, I mean, okay. to uh, for me, that that sucks. Honestly, it sucks. And uh, I always had this, you know, like if I'm not able to take lunch with me, which I was never able to take, uh, I used to stay hungry for the lunch and then go back after my classes and then okay. eat like crazy at home. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that was just me. Uh, that's how I lived. But don't, uh, you know, whatever happens, don't starve yourself. I think 150 euros a month is enough for a student. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. if you drink or you have some other expenses, I mm -hmm. feel it's enough. Yeah. So let's move to the miscellaneous expenses, rest of the expenses that you have. So let's start with short ones like uh, as I got questions from different subscribers. So I will focus on them like 
uh i think someone asked like what is the cost of cutting a hair like in a hair salon here yeah. the average cost i th- i mean why i'm saying is you might laugh at this which seems very ridiculous but i have never been to a salon i tell that to many people i'm not bragging here but yeah. he cuts his hair himself yeah, yeah. so it's whatever it is <laughs> yeah it's a skill you save around uh, uh, 15 euros on average uh, in two months so let's say 7.5 euros a month so yeah so if you buy a decent trimmer which will cost somewhere around 3000 or 3500 euros which will be for everything not euros sorry 3000 rupees, rupees my god like yeah how much yeah. euros i think for uh, around uh, 40 euros yeah so if you buy for 40 euros or something like that then that will last you for because philips trimmer generally come with 5 year warranty and they normally are very good yeah and moving on to the real expense in the uh, salon here yeah, so a salon i have actually been uh, my, my range of visiting salon has been from 0 to 35 mm-hmm. zero when i actually went to the barber school So hair uh, cutting school uh, we had one in Delft okay. so they used to do it for free so oh, okay. because they were students and they were learning so they would let uh, you would oh, let them like experiment uh, on your head so you will come out with a messy haircut like a complete bullshit haircut and but yeah it's but free it's save money yeah i mean who cares you know at least yeah, yeah. i didn't care but now uh, uh, also when uh, before i moved to amsterdam i lived in amstelveen not for a different job for the same job i just used to live at a different place and there i only had one barber place close to my house and it it used to cost me 28 euros uh-huh. when i lived in rotterdam i have been to a place which cost me 35 euros okay and that included cutting shampooing all kinds of Conditioner. sweet talks with the person who is cutting your hair so yeah everything included was there any massage or yeah, no, no? Uh, uh, yeah i think head massage was there yes okay, yes okay, okay. of course because i thought like 35 euros. 35 euros is ridiculous for sure uh, actually it's my fault i went in there even though i saw the board with 35 euros outside i was like yeah screw it uh, i'll go inside and do so, you remember anything in delft or you have never been to this or delft yeah like uh, uh, i went to this barber uh, school i told you okay, so it's zero free yeah, yeah and then in delft uh, i remember i used to go uh, once in 3 months probably to this uh, barber shop it used to co- co- cost me around 13 euros just for hair cutting mm. i used to trim my beard myself ah okay so yeah so i have been yeah. from 0 to 35 so okay yeah. so yeah i mean i just want to add a little thing like uh, in where i'm staying now in the south of netherlands near maastricht uh, i mean it is same everywhere if you are a student or something in delft also i've seen Uh, sometimes for a decent haircut you pay like between 10 to 15 euros that is the lowest price i am telling you because you can go as high as 35 but this is the lowest price and i don't know personally what is the quality of the haircut i've heard from people it is good uh, when you are a student if you go for that 10 15 euros it is affordable but still i would say if possible buy a trimmer if you cannot do it yourself then just ask someone to do the back part and do the side and something which is very ridiculous but it's up to you like yeah uh, It's all about how much bucks you want to save, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, and it's a skill. Don't, uh, I mean, cutting hair is a skill. So yeah, yeah, yeah. don't, uh, never miss, uh, <laughs> like how to say, uh, misunderstand it or yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, think it's uh, low. It's not. No, low. no, no, no. Yeah, I remember that Shah Rukh Khan dialogue. Yeah, कोई धंधा छोटा नहीं होता, धंधे से बड़ा कोई धर्म नहीं होता. It's like, a, it's a. It's like one of the best Shah Rukh Khan dialogues ever. If you are from India, then yeah, you yeah, understand yeah. what I'm saying. For those people who are not from India, it basically means my business is everything for me. There's nothing more than my business, you know. So yeah, so I think it's a skill. Uh, you should learn it. Yeah. And uh, transport. Mis- transport. Uh, transportation. Uh, so transportation wise i think i now my company uh, refunds my entire transportation uh, budget mm. but i i would say like on a regular basis i think i spend around 100 euros per month on my public transportation and it's usually for going to the office and coming back you know and my company refunds me that so yeah so yeah that. so if you are a student then the advice is best to buy a bike, bike because yes. you know like amsterdam is the bike capital in the world yeah. when but bike culture wise the biggest bike mm-hmm. culture is in amsterdam yeah mm-hmm. for sure yeah i mean here also the roads are pretty good right like yeah. for the <coughs> bikes you, i mean yeah. by bikes again for indian and other people i don't know what you call because i was confused initially by bikes we mean bicycles yeah bicycle yeah, yeah. <laughs> because here it is called as bikes yeah. so that's how you call yeah. it 
and i think you can i mean if you're a student the best thing is to buy a bike because public transport is always expensive so during student time you can save a lot of money for this short mode transport like three five kilometers buy a bike second hand bike initially you can buy it for 30 to 50 euros sometimes if you're lucky you can get it for 25 euros you have to search around different facebook groups and there are different modes of how to search for it maybe i'll make a separate video on it in future and for the new bikes i don't advise you to buy new bikes because you might move sometime i mean it is easy also to take it with you if you are using a transport but still it might be stolen because you know if you have a bike yeah. in most places it gets i mean especially in student cities like delft or everywhere and, in netherlands bikes get stolen yeah. like crazy There's so like, yeah instead of getting that pain of losing the new bike it's better to have this 20 to 40 i got bike. my first job i got my first job as a python developer the first thing i bought with my first month salary was a new bike yeah and it was for 330 euros four months later it was gone okay i don't know who took it <laughs> i was uh, i was gone on king's day to the hague to yeah. enjoy i come back my bike was chained to the bike stand and when i came back i only saw the chain so like oh, okay. someone took it yeah yeah, so okay. it happens. Uh, 330 euros completely down the drain. I uh, haven't bought a bike since then. But yes, I would like to add one more thing here. Mm -hmm. If uh, if you buy a bike for 30 to 50 euros, don't forget the maintenance cost or the maintenance energy it takes. One puncture, you have to carry it back uh, to a bike shop, take uh, repair it, which is not a bad thing. You know, I'm not complaining. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying if you're looking for added luxury mm -hmm. like if you're looking for added comfort at lower price in netherlands now we have uh, bike renting services we have swapfeeds.nl mm -hmm. and we have funmove.nl so uh, he will leave the link yeah, in, the yeah, in the description below so basically you can rent a bike for 15 euros and let's say you get a puncture punctured bike you call them they come to you in uh, between one hour to 24 hours and they will take the bike give you a new bike and you are done you don't have to do anything so mm -hmm. basically you can just lock your bike wherever you uh, your bike has a flat tire you can go away uh, set a call them up set a time for exchanging the bike go and exchange it you don't have don't have to waste your time don't have to spend money on maintenance or anything because i don't know how much uh, even when i had the new bike i uh, fixed the flat tire issue like two times or three times because for and in then four months do you remember the cost approximately? yeah uh, uh, i think uh, a flat tire uh, with uh, uh, with uh, handling and everything costs around 35 euros mm, so okay. uh, and it depends on the tire as yeah, well yeah, if you yeah, have yeah. a thin tire I, I had a sports bike mm -hmm. 330 euros Okay. So uh, it, it cost me around 35 euros and I have done it three times. Uh, this Swap Fits bike, even though it's not the best bike in the world, like if I had to buy that bike, I would never buy that. But since it is only 15 euros a month and now I'm earning and uh, no maintenance is required, nothing is required. I got uh, flat tires or even when my seat was down, I used to complain and they used to come and exchange uh, the bike for a new one, you know? Ah, okay. So that's, it's like... That's nice. I mean, I didn't know this. So yeah, it's a nice information. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you you say, you say my, my seat is too low. I can't fix it. They say, okay, we are coming. And they come with a new bike and they uh, change it for you. Especially there is this new website. There is this new platform called as Funmove. V-A-N-M-O-O-F dot N-L and they're actually renting electric bikes. So if oh. you are, and that also at 19 euros per month. So, so regular bikes is, also, like. regular bike 15 euros per month, electric bike 19 euros per, per month. So if you're ready to shell out, you know, four euros extra per month, I would say try but out. I think it is like if you are even in a range of five or 10 kilometers yeah. from your workplace, yeah. it is better to spend that much money yeah. instead of taking a tram or a train, yes, which is sure. really expensive. I mean, uh. Personally, the cost, I don't know how it is priced. You can check on the websites, but I know from my personal experience, if you go in a bus in the south of Netherlands, in some, they have different service providers like Arriva, NS, GVB, Connexicon, and there are many providers. So if you go in south, it costs around 2.5 euros for 20 minutes bus ride. This is just abstract information. This is nothing, something specific. And here, I think I had experience like a bus ride of 20 minutes, the same ride in, in Amsterdam. It cost me around 2.2 uh, .2 or 2.1 euros, but it varies from the provider, not for the region, but yeah. every region has different providers. So it varies for that. So you can imagine and check online also. There are many, many sites I'll leave in the link below how much it costs. But 
public transport is always expensive that's the yeah. main conclusion well in my case my company is refunding me the money so yeah, i yeah. don't have to worry but yeah if you are a student i would say go with a bike yeah, and buy the second hand bike you buy the second hand bike uh, don't buy anything pretty and if you want a little bit uh, you know m- more comfort with uh, less price go for these kind of services i think it's uh, too affordable uh-huh. too accessible and it's just uh, really hassle free i think that's the most important part and one thing don't forget i want to add like if you buy a second hand bike then always remember to buy a good decent lock yeah <laughs> that, that yeah. everyone two locks one on the bike and one chain lock chain so lock, you yeah. know you have to make sure you have two locks still there is no guarantee you will have the yeah, bike yeah, forever yeah. <laughs> someone is going to take it away from you because i yeah, once yeah. saw a bike near yeah. my office and uh, one of its tire was it was yeah, yeah. it was tied with a, a, a chain lock and a normal and lock the frame so they took away the frame they took away the tire one tire they took away the seat so anything that they can t- take will they will take take it away yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah i mean uh, i mean i have also seen in delft like the front tire was only there with the the thing tied to that frame yeah. and the whole rest of the bike was gone like they just removed the front tire and <laughs> by the way i'm scared we are telling people that you know these things are happening and it's like it's like highly criminal uh, city oh, but no, believe no, no, me no, 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 no. this is the highest level of criminal activity that happens here like yeah, bike yeah, yeah. stealing you know this netherlands is considered as one of the most safest place yeah, yeah. in uh, i think in it was in top 5 i don't remember yes, yeah. i can leave the rankings below yeah, but yeah it was somewhere in the top 5 in yeah. terms of safety so that's like the highest your bike yeah. getting stolen is one of the highest uh, factors that uh, even when you go to the police website the first 10 things that they say uh, has this happened have you been robbed have you been this like the first point is has your bike been stolen that's like the first thing uh, they realize okay it happens you know so so you can so imagine worry. like yeah. the gravest crime here is by bike, bike being stolen bike yeah. being stolen yeah. so that's nothing important yeah. like and what are the other expenses i would say on a uh, on an average i spend around 200 euros per month on regular expense for example i have a phone subscription mm-hmm. you don't have to take it but it's uh, yeah i'm just stupid uh, because no, i have a, i mean when you are working yeah. it is also necessary like you need to have the but yeah i mean your house usually comes uh, wherever you rent it yeah. usually comes with internet okay. you know yeah, like yeah, yeah. 95% of and the cases most public transport here uh, every ha cafes have internet public transport yeah. ha- has internet also the cities also, i mean nowadays yeah. i'm finding in most cities you have a free wifi and you can catch it in different yeah. points in the city yeah, so okay. yeah. like if you are in a university once you go inside that campus range you have a profile and you can connect yeah. with the wifi by the way when i was a student i had miscellaneous zero hmm. just i didn't have a bike for 2 years i used to walk 7 kilometers uh to and fro every day to the university and come back i never missed one lecture i didn't i lived like a beggar like i'll be completely honest because come on i mean we are not yeah. aged we are young we can walk a little bit you know it's not going to harm it's just going to be useful so for you it's like exercise you know there is no limit like yeah. you can make you can expand your creativity to yeah. save as much as you want yeah. and there is no uh, like no shame in uh, admitting that i want to live at uh, less expense yeah, i yeah. mean uh, i i think even the money Dutch doesn't culture, grow the trees, way they yeah. do it here i yeah. feel they also have a similar like they don't want to just lavishly spend our money yeah. they have like a frugal I, i would not say frugal but something like save as much as you need like yeah, not like yeah, just yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah so maybe just to add finally like the housing in the housing you have also the uh, furnished house and unfurnished house or uh, that is a very broad topic like what should you choose so maybe i'll make a separate video on that also because i don't want to make this long this is already long and thank you very much for joining this and yeah. don't forget to subscribe to his channel see the links below uh, he is really doing a great job by teaching python as simplistic way as possible to write from the basic concepts to the advanced level of python and uh, i mean he will be really happy if you are uh, show him some support because you know subscribing is free <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but what i mean is like i'd be really happy if you because uh, i know see one people. of my videos and it helps you in your uh, i don't know python interview or helps you solve a python problem or i'll be even much happier if you see one of my video and you critique me and say hey lenin there is a better way to do this i'll be much happier i'm always eager to learn and yeah uh, i think that will make me much happier so be part of the community 
as much as you can interact with me with sambit with everyone yeah so, uh, so share that's your why comments I... yes uh, and uh, yeah just uh, keep interacting with us we love to share our uh, opinion get feedbacks you know sometimes get compliments we also like that uh, for sure and yeah subscribe to both our channels and uh, and yeah. uh, i mean that's why i always say don't forget to comment in his videos when you see his channel and also in this video so that we know what we lacked or we missed something because we are not covering everything we are just doing something based on our experiences what you might experience or you might encounter when you come to netherlands so just don't forget to comment and smash that thumbs up button if you like the video and don't forget to share among your peers who want to come to netherlands maybe for work or maybe for studies from amsterdam bye bye hello, hello everyone mo mo ko ne ra kemti hobo e hello everyone painas e work video 6 dhar ka